In this video, I want to show some of the features of trending and data logging in optics. And I've kind of taken a previous project that I had started in some other videos, and I've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. I've, uh, you know, in some previous videos, I had kind of made a faceplate, um, and I, I, I was able to kind of deploy that faceplate and tie it to a UDT in the Logix controller. We still have that going on. If I were to uh, start this pump 101, see it kind of animates to a yellow indicator and I've got a little bit of data going here. Um, I actually have uh, a Logix Echo running in the background and some, and some Logix uh, in my uh, Studio 5000 emulating a control Logix. So what I wanna do is I wanna come to this pump 101 screen. I'm gonna add a, a real-time trend and I want to add a data log uh, to this page. So I'm going to turn off the emulator here. So first part will just be um, a trend, and that's fairly straightforward. So uh, I, I've created a couple of screens ahead of time. I got this Pump 101 screen right here. If I right click on the Pump 101 uh, screen or page, I'm going to say New, and I'm going to go to Data Controls. So in the past, we've been going to base controls and finding all the things such as LEDs and buttons and whatnot. And we've gone to containers to add panels or screens. This time we're gonna to go to data controls and we see we have some options here for combo box, list box, data grid, trend, and even some chart features like XY and pi and histogram. And the new spark line is a part of a 1.3 release is also here under data controls. I want to do a trend first. I'm going to go with trend and I'm going to kind of just fit this into the space a little bit. And it doesn't really matter what we do there, but we'll kind of resize a little bit. So properties of the trend, of course, will be over here. And if I scroll down a little bit, we can see that the uh, we have a pin Y axis and it shows us a minimum value of minus 100 and a maximum of 100. I can go ahead and rescale this to zero because in this example, my, um, my logic actually is gonna run from zero to 100. So that's my range. And then for pins, we will have one pin here already created by default. I can create multiple pins by hitting this uh, plus symbol, add additional pins. But for right now, I just wanna trend the flow which was coming from the UDT from the uh, from the Logix controller. So if I scroll down and find my COM drivers, my RA Ethernet driver, my Echo CPU, and then my tags, controller tags, pump one, and finally flow and hit select. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna this will just basically be a real-time trend and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, put this in the emulator and see what it does. All right, so we'll come to Pump 101 screen. If I go ahead and start my pump, we'll see we have some data that'll get generated here. Now, uh, this little feature here in the widget is the spark line, the new spark line. Feature. So it, it kind of gives a, a, a little trend as well. But this is a, this is but this is the true trend um, object right here. Now, if I were to click on in in the space, we see that we can actually kind of move move around and click and and get a value. So a timestamp and a value. So that that's good. We can kind of zoom out a little bit, zoom in a little bit, and uh, and see. But this is a real-time trend, meaning that if I were to go back to my summary page and I come back to my Pump 101, the trend kind of clears out and starts over again. All right, so real-time trend. Now, to do uh, historical trending, we'll need to set up a data log first. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I might scrunch that down just a little bit. So we're gonna add a data log here, or create a data log first. So the easiest way to create a data log or a data logger is to go back to our dashboard and use the wizard that's here on the dashboard to configure a data logger. Um, the wizard's nice because it's gonna 
kind of step us through and we don't forget about creating, uh, you know, creating all the things we need. So first, uh, new data logger. Uh, by default, it's data logger one. I think that's fine for me because this will be tied to pump one and I'll leave it as, you know, one for pump one. Your options here are periodic sampling or change in value or of course none, uh, but change in value or periodic. I think I'll go with periodic and leave it for one second, um, just for example purposes. Uh, and we'll hit next. So it just kind of affirms what we've done so far. We've given, we can you know change the name if we still want to, and we can change the sampling mode if we want to, as well as the sampling period. Right now it's set to one second. We're gonna hit next because it's gonna ask about the database. So we're gonna create a, a database. Now we have the ability to use the embedded database. This will be in you know embedded optics database, or we could tie it to some sort of external database, but uh, we'll go ahead and use the embedded. Now note that when we go to runtime with this, to create this database would require one token from our runtime um, tokens, as well as if we're going to tie it to an OD, ODBC connection, that would also take a token. So I'm going to go ahead and call it embedded database one. I'll leave it as default as well. We'll say next. And uh, in memory properties, false or true, we'll leave it false. And uh, we'll say next. Now, next is actually, let's just go and select our variables. So being that this will be tied to pump one, I'll come down here to com drivers, RA ethernet IP, echo, tags, controller, pump one, I'm just going to log the flow. I could, I could, of course, log additional variables here, but I'm just going to go with flow for the moment. Hit next. So right now everything's uh, it's done, successfully configured, and we'll say exit. Now if I come back to my pump 101, um, first we'll, we'll uh, before I go back and change the, the, the trend, I want to also add a, a data um, view or data log window here on the screen. So back here on pump 101, I can right click, I say new, go to data controls, and I could say a data grid. And we'll just kind of go ahead and stretch that to kind of fit in the space. A little bit bigger there. So all we got to do now is tie the data logger to this data grid. And to do that, we can uh, come down. We see in our our project view, we have a, a loggers kind of folder. And we have this data logger one that we just created. So I could take this and drag it and drop it into the, uh, the data grid. Now, there are some uh, you know, options to this data grid that we can change uh, if we want here in the properties. Um, it does show a timestamp and a local timestamp. So the, the timestamp itself is, is a universal time, whereas the local timestamp is uh, tied to my computer and my, my um, um, you know, time zone. And we can control some other, you know, other um, just features through this uh, property. So you can kind of scroll through this and set it up to your liking. Um, now, if, uh, to tie the, the trend chart we created back a few moments ago to the historical data versus the real-time data, I'm going to click back on this, on the uh, trend, get the properties for the trend back up here again. So we have this model up here under trend properties. I'm going to take the data logger that I created earlier, drag it and put it onto the model. Now, when, I, when that happens, the, the flow last value now sh changed here under the pin. So that before the pin was tied to the, um, to the tag uh, from the uh, controller, now it's tied to the, the tag and the data logger. All right. 
So now when I go back into the uh, emulator, we'll be we'll get data here in our time in our data grid. We'll also get uh, historical data in our trend. So let me go ahead and start the emulator. All right, so I left my pump running uh, before, so it's still running now. So we see that we we're getting data in our in our data grid down here. We're also getting historical data right now uh, in our trend chart. And the same thing here. I can scroll back and look. Now, of course, you know, just started the emulator a few moments ago, so so it only went back a few moments. But here's the difference. If I go back to my other screen. And then jump around to some other screens. If I come back to pump 101, my data is still there. So it did not lose lose the data. It did not reset the trend chart. So by creating an an embedded database, by creating a data logger, um, you know, one I can I can get a uh, you know a data view down here, and I am actually logging this data where I could you know export this to a CSV file. Um, but I'm also getting the uh, the historical view in this trend chart. All right, so trending and uh, data logging are very incredibly easy to set up here in Optics.